G'day guys and gal. Warhammer is loaded full of badass heroes. No one is denying that. From guardsmen who punch above their weight and save the day despite the odds stacked against them, all the way up to the godlike Primarchs whose actions can twist the fate of the galaxy altogether. Grimaldus is one such hero, a legendary Black Templar who held the city of Hell's Reach against a horrifying endless tide of orcs. It was quite literally the last stand of all our stands, but Grimaldus has two things that set him apart from all the other badass heroes. Firstly, his story was interesting before Hell's Reach and continues to be after it, and the big one, he has a feature length movie on YouTube which shows off his epic last stand. Linked below, highly recommend. But as I said, Grimaldus is more than just the hero of Hell's Reach. He has fought in various conflicts outside of that, as well as been involved in some pretty interesting and engaging lore. As such, it's time to tell it. Time to get to know Grimaldus as more than just a hectic orc slayer. Before we get started, Surfshark, you know the drill, link below. Today I will go over- nah, I'm just joking. I wouldn't do Surfshark dirty like that, especially since they've been sponsoring this channel for as long as I've known where the G-spot is. Surfshark, for those painfully unaware, is in my biased opinion, the best VPN on the market for two reasons. Reason one is just how easy it is to use. One click and bam! They also have a Google extension to make it even easier to access. The second reason is that using my linking code MAGICAL below, you'll get 83% off, 3 months free, and a 30 day money back guarantee. For those of you that are like, Cool story, Major Kill. TF is a VPN. A VPN is a software that allows you to mask your identity online whilst accessing the internets of other countries. This lets you expand your streaming service libraries, get past government firewalls, such as the one currently blocking Steam and PayPal in Indonesia, or just straight up browse with no fear of detection. Cheers to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Today I'll go over the lore of Grimaldus, talking about what he was up to before Hell's Reach, briefly going over Hell's Reach, just because I already have a video about it, before moving into what he did after it and how it had affected his life and career. Let's get into it. Merrick Grimaldus, bet you didn't know his first name was Merrick, did ya? Was a legend very early on in his career. He proved himself in dozens of battles and absolutely soared up through the Black Templar's hierarchy, finding himself to be the youngest ever sword brother that has ever lived. A sword brother obviously being someone whose mother fucked a sword and gave birth to twins, one twin taking upon their mother's humanoid traits whilst the other twin comes out as a sword. Hence, you know, sword brother brother of a sword. Oh yeah, and they happen to also be a part of the revered first company. From there, his zealous faith in the Emperor, as well as his ability to eternally crusade the shit out of the enemy, got him promoted to a chaplain, a role that is highly revered within the Black Templars, as they are one of the only Space Marine chapters that see the Emperor as a god, which, you know, to be fair, he kinda is a god at this point, so that's a pretty valid mindset. Here's a fun fact, the chaplains were a position created by the Emperor to make sure the Space Marines within each legion remained secular and atheist, so a bit ironic there. Merrick has been shot, stabbed, clobbered, fisted, and fucked dozens of times, nearly dying more times than I've woken up with morning wood after I dream about Jessica Rabbit. It makes sense. He is a zealous religious leader of a hyper-aggressive group of sword-loving space marines who genuinely believe the Emperor is guiding their every move. Of course, they're going to forego standard battle tactics in favor of hectic melee charges at enemy gun lines. And the fuck thing is because it works, it justifies the tactics so they keep doing it. Grimaldus probably feels fucking invincible by this point. With an impressive battle record and an amazing skill for public speaking, Grimaldus was chosen to become the High Chaplain upon the death of its previous occupant. So as you can see, Hell's Reach wasn't Grimaldus' baptism by fire. He was already a chapter legend before his epic last stand. But yeah, it definitely didn't hurt to be a chapter legend, then also fight in one of the most epic sieges ever. What's above a legend? Before that epic last stand, there would be one more notable event in Grimaldus' life that's worth mentioning. The world of Varadon, yes very generic, was under siege by the Tyranids. The Shadow Wolves chapter swore to fight to the last to defend their homeworld, hence they sent out distress beacons. Grimaldus answered. He and his strike team fought their way through to the Shadow Wolves fortress monastery to try save the survivors. Although Grimaldus could not reach them, he witnessed the last stand of the Shadow Wolves, with broken swords and empty bolters fighting to the last. The final Shadow Wolf held his chapter banner upright, even as he was torn to shreds, to ensure that as long as a Shadow Wolf lived, their chapter honor would be upheld. 
Grimaldus got a massive fucking boner watching this. He described it as one of the most epic things he had ever seen, and he hoped that his own eventual death would be just as glorious. With that experience, Grimaldus was promoted to the rank of Reclusiarch of the Black Templars, a very, very high ranking role, basically the spiritual leader of the Templars and keeper of the chapter's sacred relics. This is why Grimaldus is so fucking pimped out with gear, it's his job. With his new promotion, Grimaldus accompanied his chapter to aid in the Third War of Armageddon. Gazkal had returned with an even bigger force of greenskins, and he wished to see the world finally conquered. Grimaldus was assigned to defend the city of Hell's Reach, and holy fucking shit did he defend it. His odds of success were basically zero, like you could run 100 simulations of the war and any commander would lose each and every time. But Grimaldus just isn't any commander though. Through his obscene lack of fear and unbreakable morale, he inspired the city's defenders, meaning the army's discipline was amazing and there was barely any loss of efficiency due to fear. He was able to convince a Titan Legion to remain in the city despite its initial intentions to leave, and he fought to gain every advantage, including convincing the Mechanicus to let him use a mega super weapon despite not having the correct incense and oils to appropriately operate it. Like I said, the details of Hell's Reach are covered in a video I've already made, or if you've got a couple hours, I highly recommend watching the fan-made feature-length movie on it. Long story short, after months of hectic fighting where millions of Orcs had died and the defenders had been reduced to about 10% of their original fighting force, Grimaldus leads a last stand in the city's main chapel. The Orcs rush in and one by one Grimaldus's brothers die. Grimaldus fights on and none of the guardsmen with him break or flee. There was a fuckload of awesome one-liners during the siege, most of which came from Grimaldus. One of my favourites is, I have dug my grave in this place and I will either triumph or I will die. How can you hear that then retreat? It's literally impossible. As the last of the defenders got overwhelmed, the chapel collapses, killing everyone, except Grimaldus. After a day of being buried alive, Grimaldus claws his way out of the rubble as the sole survivor. He is also able to save a few of the chapel's precious relics, and now has a trio of servitors that carry them around for him. The orcs had been beaten, not because the Imperials had killed them all, but because they had been held off long enough for the Season of Fire to begin. The Season of Fire is a weather event on Armageddon that makes a lot of the planet inhospitable, so you can't really siege during it. Grimaldus was declared the hero of Hell's Reach, as if there was only one. Now that is where his tale ends for a lot of you, but that is not where it ends for Grimaldus. Have you heard of the Celestial Lions, a chapter of brave and morally sound marines with a fucking awesome paint scheme? They spoke out against the horrifying actions of the Inquisition, even going as far as to report the Inquisition for crimes against humanity to the Lords of Terra. As such, the Inquisition, uh, responded by causing the death of the entire chapter. Obviously, they couldn't just fight them. However, when the Celestial Lions were fighting on Armageddon, everything went against them. Their equipment malfunctioned, their leaders were assassinated by crackshot orc snipers, which, you know, for some reason look suspiciously like Vindicare assassins. After a short while, they had lost half their chapter in these skirmishes, losses dozens of times higher than any of the other chapters. They were tasked with attacking an orc base that housed numerous gargants that were not yet completed. They did so with their final 500 marines, the last half of their chapter. Yet when they charged, the gargants woke up, thousands of orcs lying in ambush emerged, and those pesky crackshot orc snipers returned. It was a massacre, with very few lions escaping. The escaped lions were then targeted again, with their last remaining apothecary getting assassinated via a lash shot to the islands in Imperial-held territory. Clearly a very sneaky orc, likely painted in purple. A few of the lions wanted to reach Grimaldus. He was a noble paragon of justice. They knew their chapter was doomed, but they wanted the truth of their betrayal to be known to all. Hence they recorded a message and sent a couple lions to deliver it to Grimaldus in person. Except they never made it. Their ship crashed and killed all those on board. Despite this, Grimaldus recovered the ship and the message and he saw that they had been betrayed. As the Black Templars and Celestial Lions were both sons of Dawn, he swore to uncover what had happened to them. He even asked his Lord Helbrecht and was given permission to abandon the pursuit of Gazkal so that he could stay on Armageddon and Sherlock Holmes this shit. That's how dedicated to justice our boy is. He finds the few surviving Celestial Lions and they basically tell them that they have accepted their fate and wish to have an epic last stand. Grimaldus is like, well, it's probably a better idea to go back home and rebuild your chapter, but as a bit of a last stand connoisseur myself, I can appreciate why you'd want to do that. The Lions and Grimaldus discuss the treachery of the Inquisition, and Grimaldus decides that the Lions must live on. After all, their paint scheme is just too good. 
But the lions are stubborn and they tell him they're going back to where their brothers were killed against the orcs to die alongside them. Grimaldus is in a pickle. The lions must not die, yet they are going to their death. The lions must not die. So Grimaldus will save them. Utilizing his authority, rank, and reputation, Grimaldus brings a force of Armageddon Steel Legion gunsmen to aid the lions. He also brings his massive fucking balls and he swears to fight by their side. The battle was epic. Steel Legion, Black Templars, Celestial Lions, Orc Gargants, all in a pretty tight valley. One thing about himself that Grimaldus doesn't like, but he can't really help it, is the fact that he is such an attractive target for orcs. He is decked out in sweet ass gear and his reputation is legendary, so it's no shock that the orcs warboss charged him. The duel was intense, but this was one of those fuck you war bosses that don't really die. Grimaldus was beaten down, but then the last remaining lion stepped in. The lion fought the orc like a demon, impressing even Grimaldus. However, the orc was just too strong. It tore off the lion's arm and sliced off his leg. Grimaldus jumps on the war boss's back and he pulls its head back, exposing its neck. With a bang, the severely disabled lion shot the war boss in the neck, causing its head to pop off in a messy fashion. Grandmaster Helbrecht, having delayed the Black Templar's pursuit of Gazkal, arrives, landing dozens of Black Templar drop pods in the battle who proceed to slaughter the leaderless greenskins. The mangled lion was like, fuck dying, Grimaldus, help me up. Hence, Merrick helped up the last surviving Celestial Lion as the battle was won. Grimaldus had saved the Celestial Lions. With an augmented leg and arm, equipped with ancient gold Imperial Fist hero armor from the Black Templar's relic room, as well as the polished skull of the war boss he had slain, the new chapter master of the Celestial Lions bade farewell to Grimaldus. He would travel home with the gene seed he had recovered from his fallen brothers and begin the slow process of rebuilding his chapter. The lions, in their fucking dope ass paint scheme, would live on. Grimaldus would then follow his chapter in their pursuit of Gazkal. During the current shenanigans with the fall of Cadia and the opening of the Great Rift, Grimaldus hasn't featured much, but we know for certain that he's recently crossed the Rubicon Primaris to become a Primaris Marine, all with a fancy new model. With all the demonic shit happening in the galaxy, religious zeal is at an all-time high. In Hell's Reach, a cult has started that is dedicated to Grimaldus, seeing him as an extension of the Emperor. They gather around the chapel where he had his last stand, and they burn people that they think are heretics. Most funny of all, they will dig graves and random spots in honor of Grimaldus' dope as fuck line, I have dug my grave in this place and I will either triumph or I will die. It does make me wonder who told them about it though, considering Grimaldus was the sole survivor. It would be pretty funny if when he was recounting what happened, he was like, yeah, and then before the orcs attacked, I was spitting these fucking sweet one-liners, and then he just lists all the cool shit he said. I'd probably do that if I was him. Regardless, the tale of Merrick Grimaldus is far from over, and I for one am excited to see what he does next. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. We're only one dollar per month to give you access to a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more grim content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.